Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this webinar, Students with Refugee Background Entering the Job Market. I'm Sinipi, but I'm from the Finnish National Agency for Education, EDUFI. I will be chairing this session. This webinar is organized as part of Horizon 2020 Science for Refugees project called Guiding Refugees via European Exchange and Training, GREET. Uh, this project is coordinated by a consortium including Academic Cooperation Association, ACA, German Academic Exchange Service, DAAD, and us, EDUFI. Uh, and, and this is the second webinar of Total 3 organized by the project. The first one uh, that we held was focusing on the role of European higher education community in the integration of highly skilled refugees. It's now available as a recording on the project website, if you're interested. Uh, the third and, and, and final webinar will focus on creating sustainable career paths for scholars with refugee background. It will take place on 14th of March, so next week. And also this webinar will be available as a recording after the event. Um, today we are focusing on a highly important topic of supporting students with refugee background to enter the European labour market. Higher education institutions can support students with refugee and, and migrant backgrounds uh, in the transition to the labour market in various different ways, such as creating partnerships with companies, providing internship programmes, providing trainings and seminars on soft skills and, and many other measures. Uh, but today in this webinar you will learn uh, of a model um, in place in Germany, uh, get an update of results of a nationally implemented programme in Finland, uh, and also hear uh, about the regional example of successful integration projects for highly skilled refugees in, in Sweden. I just have a few technical remarks before we give the floor to our speakers. So uh, the total duration of this webinar is one hour and you as a participant you have the opportunity to send us comments and, and questions via chat. But please note that the questions for all of our speakers will be raised uh, at the very end of the webinar. We have reserved um, time for the for the for the questions uh, after the three presentations. Um, and I will now briefly introduce our speakers before giving the floor to them. So first, we have Louise Haag, uh, working at the International Career Service at the University of Passau um, as the university's coach for degree-seeking students. She's also in charge of the I Study Pass program and coordinates the DAD-funded programs Integra and Welcome for Refugees in, in Passau. Uh, then we have Vesa Parkkonen, a senior lecturer at the HAMC University of Applied Sciences, presenting the main results of the project, uh, the Career Path Guidance Services. And then we have Eva-Brit Eva Grönberg uh, from Regional Development um, uh, Manager at the Unit for Business Development and Labour Market at Region Skåne, Sweden. And in the, in the region of Skåne, universities, organizations, authorities and employers have collaborated to facilitate the integration of highly skilled refugee, refugees. And since 2016, Eva Brit has been in charge of the portfolio of pilot projects uh, generated to develop efficient methods to support the integration into the labor market. So, uh, we will start with the, with the German example. Um, so, Louise, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. I will present the iStudy Coach and iStudy Pass program at our university, facing the question whether um, this project that we have been offering for career orientation for international students can at the end also be implemented for refugees. We are actually in between um, these two topics as um, we have now more than three years of experience with our career orientation for the internationals and um, thanks to the DAD's funding we will also be able to focus more on refugees and the career orientation in the next year. Yeah, what is I study. Um, it stands actually at, for the abbreviation of international students in German and there is no specific link to a well-known tech company, although a lot of people like the small i and it's a, an eye-catcher, so to say. What is the University of Passau offering? Um, to give you a, a little overview, 
Passau has been um, all in the news in, in Germany, maybe uh, all over Europe in 2015, as we are located at the border to Austria. And um, in this summer and autumn weeks in 2015, a lot of several thousand refugees have been entering our small city of 50,000 people. Obviously, not all of them have been staying here since then, but um, it has changed our, well, let's say, migrant structure somehow. At the University of Passau, we have um, about 13,000 students, 14% uh, are internationals, and we have 60 students from Syria. and also some other countries, but this is the biggest group of refugees represented here. We um, have a, the DAD funded Integra and Welcome programs in which we have been focusing on study preparation so far. We are now offering also services for students, and as I already said before, in the future we are planning to support refugee students with their career orientation. So what have we achieved so far focusing for international, on internationals? In 2015, we have been able to uh, join a Germany-wide initiative called Study and Work, funded by the Stifterverband and the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. The idea of this initiative was to link 10 higher education institutions in Germany to um, exchange the specific topics we are facing um, with regard to international students, and it has been a very fruitful exchange um, throughout the higher education institutions. There are also DID-funded projects in the STEBET program focusing on the topic of entering the job market. And um, you might see behind me on the map, I have been trying to mark the other institutions um, which I have been collaborating with or are in this project. The aim of the program is to encourage international degree-seeking students to stay in the specific region as highly skilled workers as we are facing more and more the lack of skilled workers and want to support regions with these projects. At the University of Passau, we have been creating two elements within the project. The first element is the iStudy coach. I have been in charge of this position so far and I can really tell you I enjoyed it very much. It's really uh, what I like to do, connecting people, connecting different point of views. And um, I'm, I'm very happy that we have been able to connect with several relevant partners inside and outside the university. Obviously, um, outside university, the most important partners when it comes to, for entering the job market are always camp companies. Um, but we are also connected with the Chamber of Commerce, um, the Employment Agency, Foreign Authorities regarding more administrative and legal questions, but also, for example, um, the society, German uh, Spanish society or our alumni clubs. Inside the university, we have aimed to bring together the expertise of the international office dealing with international students and the career service, and we have been able to really create the position of the ISOD co coaches, our international um, career service offer. And we have also been able to use this project to create a single source of advice for international degree-seeking students, which um, before we had this project often were facing the problem that they were sent from one person to the other and did not get the full information. That's why I'm also in constant exchange with our administrative entities and the departments. The second element in our project is the iStudy Pass. Um, it is actually thought to be um, a marketing tool for career orientation services, and it should also be a part of uh, like a, a gamification element, so um, it should be fun to participate in the program. Participation is open to all degree programs, um, and it's absolutely voluntarily, so no ECTS are granted. This might seem to be a disadvantage in the first place, but it makes us very flexible, and um, we find that we are actually um, reaching out for the target group also on this basis.
The iStudy Pass includes trainings and events specifically designed for international students in German or English. And um, some of them have been existing before, so we're just adding the marketing aspect, but they um, have also been created during the project phase. And those trainings um, are offered by the university, but also by our partners or in co collaboration with them. The six modules that you have to attend um, during the recommended two semesters so that students participate in the program, um, try to address the specific challenges for internationals. So basically, how to apply in Germany, where to apply, getting in touch with um, companies, finding out what, what, I, what how you, they can apply their theoretical knowledge from their studies, but also creating and improving their social network and intercultural competence, making them able to um, achieve good study success and improve their German language. For German language, they actually have to attend a full semester German class at our language center. For the other modules, it's able, it, it's possible to fulfill them with um, one to two days trainings. The participation of uh, in these modules is then documented with a stamp and or signature in the iStudy Pass. And um, it's really funny when people come here and say, oh, uh, I spilled some coffee all over my iStudy Pass, but I already uh, have uh, five out of six stamps. Can I still use it or can you give me a new one? And so um, people really take the challenge to, to um, get the six, six stamps. You might know the, the same system from um, your local coffee shop or some other um, yeah, affiliation programs. At the end of the program, um, I might invite students for a free cup of coffee, but basically they are getting a certificate, which they can include their um, application documents if they want to. The idea is that it is a confidence building thing. Um, they can show that they have been training for the German job market and they, that they actually have invested time. And this supports that they want to stay in Germany. And it should also highlight the fact that they are different from general labor migrants as they have already been living in Germany for some time. Currently, we have 450 students registered. Most of them are in our master programs and also a lot of them in our English taught master programs. We get a lot of positive feedback, so the one statement, you can read it here. Um, other students have told me it's like an infotainment package or it also helped them to integrate into study life in general, not only um, in the job market. The um, Expert Council, SVR Migration, has also conducted a study of supporting the study and work project. They have been um, asking international students twice about their expectations from the job market and um, the resources they have, and they have identified some interesting influencing factors, which help us now to see if we can just continue with our um, advice and, and services or if we should adapt it. The most important things they have found is that um, obviously if you want to enter the job market, you have to have an intent to remain. And this intent to remain is very much influenced by a positive judgment. So um, the internationals, but also the society have to see that it is a positive thing that they, they are staying. Um, this is something which we are not so sure uh, in the case of refugees, whether yeah, their own judgment and the society's judgment is the same as for internationals. Um, there might be some changes and we're really looking forward to analyze this in further details. Also, private links. So um, why do you stay in Germany? You stay in Germany because you have friends, because you have a partner. And in case of refugees, um, often also families are already here. During the studies, the um, expert council has found that positive feedback on your study success, but also on um, your job-related skills, which you maybe got during internships, is very important. And um, what and social networks can further improve your personal resources. When it comes for entering the job market, 
opportunities are very important and here we face a specific challenge at the University of Passau as most of our studies are in the field of humanities, social and cultural science and um, uh, the IT um, students are a minor yet a growing part. And after your studies, language skills are very important, also the expectation of self-efficacy regarding the job applications and your job networks, which are then linked also to, um, to your maybe internship and volunteering um, experience. So this is what the expert council has found and we, as I already said, we are really happy to be able to um, now take these results and this experience in the upcoming 12 months with the help of the DAD Integra program and um, look a little bit of in further detail about our the refugee students that we have here and also adapt and create workshops and trainings for them. And um, as we have seen that collaborating with um, companies and institutions is very important, we will also continue doing this. And we want to use the expertise that, um, for example, the Chamber of Commerce or in other institutions have um, already built in the field of vocational training with refugees, which is very important in um, Germany. So the, you may have maybe heard about the dual um, vocational training system. And we want to use their expertise to yeah, further develop our program. I have integrated the links to um, the publication and the supporting entities here. Um, the study and work publication by the SVM Migration Expert Council is uh, available in German only in the full version, but the, um, there is also a summary available in English and the link is this one. So that was from my side and I'm looking forward to the question at the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Louis. This was this was highly highly interesting, and and how comprehensive activities you have in Passau and in, in Germany in general. We I think that many of the participants will will um, join me in when I when I say that many of us look up to the German examples on on um, on the comprehensive uh, approach. Uh, yeah, and you, thank you. you. Yeah, and and you raised very relevant points. Uh, so I just encourage the participants that you can. Uh, you're welcome to send the questions throughout the webinar. We will just raise them um, in, in, in the end, but, but please send them in the, in the chat and, and then we can continue discussions with, the, with Luis as, as well. And, and Luis, you already also uh, presented some points on, on how you analyze the results and how to adapt the, the activities. And actually, our next speaker will then also continue with, uh, with some uh, main results and analysis of the, of the results of a, of a project in, in, in Finland, the career path. So, so actually, Vesa, uh, the floor is now, now yours. And, and to Luis, we will come back then. Yes, thank you, Oti, and thank you, Luis, for a great presentation. Uh, my presentation is about the uh, career path project which we had, and uh, my name is uh, Vesa Parkkonen, and uh, I come from Hamk University of Applied Sciences, and we are located in uh, about 70 kilometers north of Helsinki, and we have uh, both uh, bachelor's and uh, uh, master's degree programs in nursing engineering, for instance, bioeconomy and uh, and uh, professional teacher training. We also have uh, a lot of education export around the globe, and uh, we have about 8,000 students. The Career Path Project is actually a, a framework for uh, in recognition of prior learning and competencies among highly educated uh, uh, people with an immigrant background. And uh, the sought and found solution to smoothen career routes for highly educated immigrants and to minimize education overlaps, uh, provide employment quickly, and orientate highly educated uh, immigrants towards further studies. That was the aim of the of the project. So fully utilize the competencies by creating coherent and fully accessible national practices. 
as in the picture you can see on the on the right hand corner, uh, we were not alone there. Uh, we had help of from many many other participants from University of Applied Sciences, vocational institutions, and adult education colleges. And I come back to the picture which I'm showing you currently. There are these results, and, and we see them as a step stone. There's a road there in the middle, and of course you have the handrail there to to help you out, which uh, refers to more or less to guidance. The target group for this project was highly educated immigrants with decrease in in business, administration, technology health or vocational teacher education. And these groups were chosen due to the fact that there's a high demand for uh, this kind of uh, education among uh, the, the highly educated immigrants that have, have entered Finland. We did get a lot of information during the project of uh, highly educated immigrants, their experiences, uh, the process of uh, recognizing their competencies, uh, the additional training needed in, in, in their uh, career or, or in Finland, career guidance combining their prior, prior competencies, skills from, from, the, uh, from, the, uh, from their home country, how could it be integrated to our, our uh, society and, and the competencies that are required on the, on the working life. Placement in working life as well. Uh, how, how could it be done? How should it be done in the right way? And, and we actually received a lot of valuable information of the processes and practices for further development of the recognition and accrediting of the competencies in, in different, and this was done with the cooperation with different, different actors in the education field. We also interviewed the uh, employers and uh, workplace supervisors of, and tried to get the, the ideas from them that how we should develop this, this process further. So uh, what we resulted in during this three year pro, three-year project, it started 2015 and ended at the end of 2018. We resulted in, in creating a immigrant nurses continuing education model that makes it easier for nurses or nurse education, uh, people who have a nurse education from their home country to legalize their practice as, as being a, uh, in the field of uh, healthcare. Another model was an expert of the uh, Finnish world of work diploma model where um, I was in, in charge of actually and where we tried to create sort of an apprenticeship model where, where uh, we could combine the skills and knowledge they have from their uh, earlier education in business and, uh, and experience in, in the business sector and combine that into cooperating with Finnish companies. They were a subject as learning languages, but at the same time learning the, the skills and competencies that are required, for instance, in IT or uh, equivalent there. So what would be the additional skills that they would be required from that? Both these model, uh, module structures, models are based on flexibility and personalization. So there's a lot of degree of individualization in these processes. And, and through making it more individual, we, we believe that we can speed up the whole process of getting the competencies and skills that are required by the by the work in life. So that, that, that's some of the ideas. We also made in, in the uh, technical part of, of this project, we made a digital self-assessment tool for the uh, to be students or to be construction engineers to value their own skills, for instance, testing their language skills or, or their mathematical skills and, and assessing them for, for comparing uh, and finding out the, the areas that they need to work on further. Uh, developed also, we developed in the project a, a role play based language education model that highlights play and, and sort of having, uh, I would say, even fun during the, during the game and, and uh, at the same time, uh, authentic situations where you could 
where you could uh, uh, really use the words and, and the phrases that are, are related to, to that kind of situations. Of course, individual feedback is in every learning very important. That was used in, in that uh, model as well. And of course, the close when planning on these kind of uh, role play classes and so forth, so you have to have the working life aspect uh, weaved into these processes. We also provided a model for uh, workshop model for health sector workers who, who are introducing immigrant students to work. So we we sort of trained the trainers in a way, and then tried to help them out to to spot the things that are helpful. And uh, that was very very interesting. We also made uh, general recommendations for vocational teacher education regarding the content and structure of the of the studies and these uh, included sections of student selection so so when we are selecting people who with immigrant background when they want to become teachers what are the things that we we could emphasize more more or less in the selection process and these recommendations were used and uh, and, and implemented throughout throughout the Finnish educational system also, language as it is very important, and communication education model for immigrant nurses were introduced. One interesting aspect of the whole project was the, the, the idea of having a multidisciplinary cooperation between, between the actors and, and create a new kind of networks where, where people from engineering and from business and health and, and, and teacher training could combine the best of those together and find out some some new ideas so coming back to the to the picture you can see that that uh, there are these self efficacy that louise was mentioning about that that's a vital path and that can happen earlier before they start their studies at uh, at for instance at adult education college and 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 in that kind of institution it's just a path that 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 encourages them to to work further in their skills and then then eventually having having the knowledge of the working life having the knowledge of uh, enough skills in in languages or in the Finnish language particularly here and, and see that how how things are going and, and, and further on work on their on their path to towards work. So uh, idea with the whole thing is that you have individual paths, you have a lot of guidance, guidance of learning, uh, career guidance, all of those uh, in the whole of the process. So we try to smooth and carry paths, fast get a fast access to employment and utilization the existing uh, 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 competencies and uh, get training started as, as, as soon as possible it, it's for them. I think this is my presentation of the theme. Thank you, Vesa. This was also very comprehensive and, and uh, presented in a nutshell or in one slide. Um, so thank you so much, and uh, and we will come back, uh, Vesa, also also um, to you in the in the questions part after the next presentation. So now we'll we will move to to Sweden to Skåne. Uh, so I'm excited to give the floor to Eva Britt. A little bit too late on a rainy morning, I jumped on the train, crowded as usual. Next to me sat a man struggling with some Swedish vocabulary. He told me he was a dentist from Syria. After five years in Sweden, he had finally given up his ambition to work as a dentist again. The course necessary to get the Swedish license has very few seats. He applied but didn't get in. Instead, the employment agency sent him to a one-year course as to become an interpreter. Hi, I'm Eva and I work for Region Skåne. I will present how we in the southern part of Sweden collaborate for successful integration of refugee academics. 
Of course, refugees should be cared well for on humanitarian grounds, but I wonder how come we don't make it easier for refugees to become a valuable asset in their new country. The encounter with the Syrian dentist made me realize that it's not the lack of money. The man had gone through several classes in Sweden, and now he was offered a one-year training to get a new profession. The not-so-good, same-for-all integration system that Sweden has created makes uh, it, as academics are considered to manage anyhow. What a waste of highly skilled people. Our region has, for Swedish condition, a high unemployment rate. And at the same time, companies cannot find people with the right qualifications to hire. To bridge the gap between the skills of the unemployed and the skills required by the employers, we have built a regional platform. To solve this unsustainable situation, it's necessary to collaborate. Here, Region Skåne, the County Administrative Board, Swedish Public Employment Services, the universities, and all municipalities in Skåne make a common effort. Uh, in 2015, the platform discussed what we could do to help refugees. Two fantastic universities in the region stepped forward, Malmö University and Lund University. Very different, but both very dynamic. Together, we started a project, Highly Skilled Migrants, Quick Route to the Labor Market. Our aim was to find methods to shorten the time of integration, methods possible to scale up and use for other professions as well. Parallel to mapping the whole process from seeking asylum to job market entry, we conducted two pilot projects, one with engineers and one with teaching assistants. We established real collaboration, gained experience and tested ideas. We discovered that everything is much more difficult in reality than on paper. And we were a bit naive and thought that a course certificate with master level courses from a reputable university should open all doors. Well, that is not enough to get a job. You need a network. You need to be familiar with the codes and working culture in your new country. And you need to be quite good at Swedish and the courses must be tailored to the job market. So we developed improved concepts and found other sources of finance. Still, some hindrances remain. It was more difficult than we thought to go from per project to permanent activity. Please meet Doa. She's a computer engineer who has worked six years in IT support and three years as a university teacher. Dua is married to Awad, an eye surgeon with 15 years working experience. They are originally Palestinians who lived in Syria and came to Sweden in November 2015. During one and a half years, they had to wait for residence permit, but used the time to study Swedish on their own. They found it difficult to get into contact with Swedes, so they searched the internet and found language cafes, the church, and different product, projects to start to build a network. Through one of the NGOs, Doa took her first course in programming. Then she heard of Matchit, one of our projects, and was admitted. Halfway through the project, Doa got a job as a programmer at Axis, a global company market leader in network video. Congrats, Doa, you are an inspiring role model. Doa has, particip <laughs> Doa has participated in, in Matchit. There is a severe shortage of IT skills in our region, and the university designed a course package together with the companies at our science park to make sure it had the required content. 
this was is a really good good concept already paying off. 17 plus 10 is our main concept. 17 stands for 17 weeks of a specially developed course package. Our participants have a degree from their home country and want to prepare for the same profession in Sweden. 10 weeks stand for internship. We are convinced that collaboration with companies is essential. So, in a total of only 27 weeks, the person is prepared and can go straight into a qualified position on the Swedish labor market. Our concept has some other ingredients. We think that highly skilled migrants should be offered to study Swedish at the university from day one. There should be high tempo in the studies, and as soon as possible, the language studies should be combined with professional courses that are necessary to work in Sweden. A course on codes and working culture in the new country should also be included, and extra workshops should be, be arranged to attract women. So, what happened to Awad? the eye specialist married to Dua. He is preparing for the extremely difficult test all medical doctors from countries outside EU need to pass in order to get the license to work in Sweden. Together with 21 other doctors from Syria, Afghanistan, Colombia and Iraq, he participated in another of our projects a 17-week course to rehearse the whole medical education necessary to be able to pass the theoretical test. The picture is from the final practical week where the students repeated the clinical skills at one of our hospitals in Region Skåne. It has been an eye-opening and useful learning process for the organizations in our platform. The commitment to the situation of, for highly skilled migrants has increased during the course of our work. We have made a mapping of the hindrances. The main four are, no one knows Swedish from the start. So many recruitments are made through networks and as new in the country, you don't have any. Too many unnecessary rules stand in the way and our not so friendly mindset. Of course, not you and me, but there is still conscious and unconscious discrimination and fear of the little bit unknown. But please look at these hindrances. It doesn't make take a rocket science to remove them. It's 2019, and we live in a global society. Everyone has a responsibility. Let's speed up integration. Anyone who speaks Swedish is welcome to read the mapping report and other reports from the different pilot projects. You find them at the link in the right corner of this picture. Maybe you have noticed that I used the notion highly skilled migrants instead of refugees with academic background. Many of the hindrances facing refugees are the same for, as for other highly skilled migrants. And we also found that there are better results in mixed groups with different nationalities. From the labor market point of view, the highly skilled migrants are valuable whatever reason for migration. What happens next? We in the platform continue the work with projects and activities for highly skilled migrants when we can find funding for it. We try to influence decision makers on national level to change system errors and provide for long-term solutions. Our vision 
is a regional center at one university, open to all highly skilled migrants in Skåne. This should work as one entrance or one stop shop where the individual should be able to receive all the necessary information and guidance needed to make well-founded choices regarding further studies and careers. The main activity of the center should be study and career guidance. And here we have already started a very successful project uh, for doing this part. Uh, coupled to the guidance, migrants with working experience should have the possibility to meet employers and professionals from their own field and also university teachers if additional studies are needed. Tests and validation should be available as well as information about mentor programs, social activities and other initiatives by NGOs. And of course, our methods should be part of the permanent offer. A lot of time and frustration when will be saved when this one-stop shop is created. We will work together, the organization in Region Skåne, until our best concepts are permanent, the one-stop shop center is a reality, and then we will spread it to the world. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Eva Fritt. Uh, this was this was again highly interesting. I think that all the three speakers presented already analysis or lessons learned from the initiatives that were were started in 2015 or or um, soon soon after the 2015. And 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 now we can really learn from these initiatives and kind of adapt them. But actually, uh, I was thinking, Eva, but maybe if you are uh, willing to react to the question in the chat uh, immediately, there was I can I can read it out loud. So um, there's a comment that great initiative. Is there a feedback loop where workplace experiences are captured and used to evaluate or adapt the program? And what measures uh, could employers take to better support refugees, highly skilled migrants on the work floor? Uh, thank you uh, for the question. Um, I think it's very important that uh, the companies are involved from the start in the outline of the program. And uh, for instance, in Matchish, we have a sp special coordinator for the companies involved uh, because for the internship, uh, they need to be prepared to make it a good internship, just not be there and do anything, but it should be a, an organized uh, internship, really. And um, for employers, it, the matter is to, to make it for them as easy as possible. So sometimes it's necessary to have a person in between uh, the, the courses, the, the individuals and the companies because of if each and every company should solve on their own issues that come up, they think it may be too much. But if they have a coordinator they can turn to for advice, it's much more easy. And we have a constant dialogue with the companies in the program and, and we have more, more turns in each program, so we, we listen to them carefully. Thank you. Uh, then we had in the chat two other questions that I was thinking actually to combine um, and ask all of our speakers to, to comment on them. So there was one question uh, concerning the, the employer involvement um, <clears throat> and, and uh, there is a question on, on how, to, how to encourage the, the employers um, to, to take part in this type of initiatives. Uh, and how do you deal with this with this issue, or have you had this kind of kind of issue in your in your projects where you have been working with the with the employers? And there was also a question uh, on what is your tip for connecting highly skilled migrants with employers, and and with what type of tools and programs have worked best? So 
I was thinking uh, if uh, if Luis, uh, you would like to comment on these uh, these points, working with employers a little bit, and then we can turn to Vesa and Eva. Just. Okay, I will be happy to do so. Um, yeah, obviously I've also faced a problem that not all employers are um, really willing to play an active role. I've also faced comments like, yeah, no problem to have a Spanish internship, but if the person is from China, they will all also uh, only steal our um, precious information. So um, you're always facing this kind of things. Um, what I find uh, one important strategy is to start with those who are um, like easier because maybe they have a, a shortage of um, skilled laborers in the specific field already or um, because they are all um, already in some or the other way inter international because they have international customers or branches or um, etc and then using these um, best practice examples everywhere you can to um, make others aware that it is no big deal and that there is support, as Eva Britt just said. And um, yeah, there the only thing what you can do is uh, persistence, persistence, persistence. And I actually um, try to use all kind of networking events, even if it's not about um, yeah human resources, but maybe about um, knowledge transfer or uh, new topics in the region or something and just being present there and making everyone aware of uh, international students and uh, yeah the challenges but also the possibilities which are there. Um, regarding the question what has worked best, um, I, I think that um, every event or possibility where you have a personal, um, yeah, we can create a personal link or where they can meet uh, is, is useful. So we have introduced, uh, for example, a guided tour on our job fair where we um, visit regional companies together with a group of the international students and they can present themselves there. We have also visited companies. Um, we have uh, in invited them for um, panel discussions and uh, because we, we found when an international student is applying to a company and they're just sending their general application saying that they want to enlight their candle in this planet organization or whatsoever, obviously it's uh, not what German HR representatives are expecting. But as soon as they're, they know more about the company and can give them the specific information why they think it's interesting, um, companies are so much more open and um, I'm also very proud that we have some companies which are taking their own internationalization now as a real challenge. So they are calling me and saying, yeah, we did an investment and an, an investigation and we now have 60 employees from all over the world and, and they really also see that it's a positive thing for them. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Louis. So many, so many good practices that you that you shared already. Thank you so much. So then I would ask Vesa to, to provide his perspective to this um, reaching employers and involving em employers. Any challenges or best practices to share? Do we still have uh, Vesa online? Well, maybe if, if Vesa is, is unavailable at the moment, maybe I can I can just ask Eva Britt to comment yes. these points. You, you already touched upon uh, some of them, but... Um, yes, but one of the very important thing is to, to make use of the role models that have uh, gone through the projects and uh, got a job and, uh, and market. So we have, like Doha, she's uh, of course coming to the next... Uh, uh, cl class we start and, and tell about her experience as what she did and how it is to work. And the same we have done with the medical doctors, those in the first uh, round, they came to inform the ones from the second and how to do and what they uh, came across when they got out. So it's very important to use the success successful examples that we have. And also involve the companies in all ways. We 
the uh, use representatives from companies in the selection process to the uh, projects. And uh, in the projects, we use cases, real cases from the companies. Uh, they, we, they arrange study tours. Uh, the students are inv invited for uh, breakfast meetings or um, there is also like job fairs, as we already heard about. But so many uh, ways to involve the companies as possible is my recommendation. Okay, thank you, Eva Britt. Uh, so I see that uh, Vesa has commented that he has some microphone problems. Um, Vesa, you can you can join when when you have solved your your microphone problem. But I could, in the meantime, I could raise um, some questions that were um, in the chat. Some more questions concerning the financial side. So on the other hand, there is a question concerning the um, if there is any economic support. Uh, for the refugee students provided by the programs, and and um, from the from the other other perspective, uh, how these projects are financed. So maybe maybe Luis, uh, back to you, if you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, regarding students' finances, um, when students are in our preparation program for studies, so the integral program, they still get funded by the local job center. Um, we have an agreement with them. Once they are become full students, uh, they are entitled to the BAföG. I have no clue how this is called in English, I have to admit, but it's um, the state-funded uh, financial program where you um, get half of your monthly paid is, is a, like a scholarship and half of it you have to pay it back without interest um, five years after your studies, I think. They are entitled to do that, although we have been seeing that more and more stu refugee students have the problem that although they are in general entitled to get it, in their specific cases it's not working. And these students um, have real problems and we cannot fund them from our project, but we are trying to support them the best we can to connect them with all kind of foundations and, and um, yeah, scholarship uh, stipend programs um, in general. Regarding the funding of the project, so as I said, uh, the ISAD Pass was funded by the Stifterverband um, during the last three years. Uh, it, my position actually is now paid from so from the university, from the general um, budget, and all additional measures for refugees are funded by the DAD's Integra and Welcome programs. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we are still waiting to solve the solve the issue with Vesa, so maybe Eva Britt. Yeah, in Sweden. Can you hear me now? No. Oh, okay. yes. oh, oh, so maybe then, um, sorry, Eva Britt, maybe we, we go back to, to Vesa's part. So Vesa can comment these questions that we have been discussing. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I, I don't know what's wrong today. No it's problem. Back and forth the microphone. But what I, uh, well, my, out of my experience, so of course the guidance and carry guidance and the, and the real uh, feeling that uh, what are the real competencies and what are the skills uh, that I have that are different from the other applicants, even though you are an immigrant, uh, immigrant that, that you could emphasize on those facts and see that, that what are the things that, uh, that make me special in, in, in the working life. And that, that's probably the thing that I would emphasize. I've been in charge of a BBA program and now currently a teacher training in, 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 in English, English speaking uh, program and so forth. So, so it's sometimes to be more or less like honest with them that, uh, and, and help them to adapt to the, the culture and the working life and the culture and what is expected out of them, out of the immigrants and, and how, how, how do you contact people and all of those things that there are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, things that they really nobody has told them sometimes that how how it really is out there in the working life and in this particular country of ours. That that's my answer, <laughs> more or less. And Vesa, uh, I don't know if you if you heard the other question. It was about mm. the, the financial side. 
So um, there was a question about how the project was financed, and then also if you provide any any financial support for the for the refugee students. Not direct finance support; it comes from some uh, some other way. But the European Union has funded our project. Yes, in that sense. Okay, thank you. And um, and then maybe Eva Britt. Yes, uh, we have. Uh, try to find finance for, from many different sources. So the European Social Fund is uh, the main financer of uh, the MATCHIT project. Uh, our initial initiative was uh, paid by the National Author Authority for Growth and Development. Also Region Skåne has put in finance uh, and uh, the, in the medical doctor project, the region pays for five students and uh, the Swedish uh, employment agency uh, pays for 15. So we combine. Sometimes the universities have com contributed uh, as well. But um, for the participants, they get the... Um, even when you come as a refugee, you have a finance for two years to, to be able to uh, establish yourself in society. So. They keep that money and they join our projects. Thank you. Um, then I, I think that we have covered um, the questions sent us by via chat, but I, I just have a final question for, for all three of you. Um, concerning, as you have participated in these projects, you have analyzed and you, you have already the lessons learned um, from the activities that you have been running. So how would you comment? What do you see that is, um, is needed for the future? So, so many of you already commented that uh, or touched upon um, those points uh, in your presentation, but just what do you see for the future? What is most important and, and what are the needs and next steps? Um, may we Should I start? You? Yes, yes, please. Louis. Okay, yeah, um, so... Uh, what I think is important for the future is what I already said, so persistence, so saying we have to continue doing this. We cannot just say, okay, yeah, this has been introduced, now we can stop. <laughs> um, because there are new students and new refugees and um, on the one hand, and on the other hand, we really need to um, make regional employers more diverse because we are facing the challenge of, um, yeah, migrating labor force in the future more and more. So not stopping the projects because uh, maybe external finance has um, ended is very, very important. And um, I've already pointed out our next steps will be to work with the group of refugees more closely um, because we see less orientation on what kind of career they are um, going up for. They, they all feel very privileged that they are um, finally made it to university and they manage to get their C1 level German and so on. But they really have to um, also yeah, focus themselves on what kind of career they're going to take by internships, by competence tests, as, as Vesa pointed out, and they are not doing this to the amount that we need them to do. Because in Germany, the system is very open and everything is, you, you can select from the services, but you're not forced to at university, and we really need to make sure that they attend this kind of support as well. Thank you. Um, Vesa, would you like to continue? Yeah, I, I think that uh, some wise person, I don't remember who it was, but in, in some conversations said that uh, both the Finnish society has to change and the working life has to change and uh, add up more to immigrant uh, employers. Finland is very young in this this uh, work and this, this, this kind of thinking more or less. And, uh, a young culture in that sense, and of course the, the the immigrants has to also adapt. So we have to find a new way. But there's certainly a lot to lot to do, and uh, and uh, I, I do hope that uh, there should be more cooperation once again. And I I believe myself more or less being a guidance counselor, teacher, so more more or less in in guidance and uh, and cooperation with the with the working life. Thank you, Vesa. And Eva Britt, you have the, the final comment. 
final word here. Yes, I think that universities should get special finance from the government to cater for the highly skilled uh, uh, migrants. We will have a very big shortage of highly skilled people, and it's just a good way of taking care of these talents that come here and, and want nothing more than to work and contribute to the society. And we should optimize our resources, not have one project here, one project there. That's why we want to go for this one-stop shop or this center where everything that happens in this region to the benefit of um, the highly skilled migrants could be collected in one place. So it's easily found and uh, made better. Thank you so much. Uh, excellent. Fin final words from, from Eva Britt and, and our three speakers. So uh, actually now um, our time is up and we need to wrap up this, this webinar. So thank you for your active participation and, and thank you for the excellent speakers. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, on this GREET website, you can find more information on the, on the upcoming project activities. So our next webinar, uh, also our final event in June that we are organizing in collaboration with Academic Refuge, Refuge uh, Project. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, we would be thankful to hear your feedback on this webinar. Uh, we will be sending you a feedback form and, and um, an email very soon today. Uh, where you can, um, in, this, in this feedback form, you can also share your good practices from this field. Uh, and these good practices can be included in the online compendium that we are compiling um, in the GRID project. But for, for further information on all these, all these activities, please uh, visit the GRID website. But now, thank you so much for joining and, and have a wonderful day.